Rosa was scrubbing the clothes when she got pricked by a pin she failed to remove. Suddenly, her mistress came in and started scolding at her. Rosa, what are you daydreaming again? Get back to work and hurry up. You're so slow. Rosa, go to the bathhouse and get some drinking water. She quickly went to do the errand, and while having a hard time pumping the water, a set of strong hands closed over hers and started helping her. Rosa does not like to be touched by Sancho. <laughs> Rosa frowned and picked up her can. Sancho made a move to help her, but she thrust him away, and the women roared again. Don't be angry. Rosa carried the can away, her head angrily down and ignoring Sancho. What took you so long? I heard everything what the women said. And you were flirting with Sancho. I can't believe it. She was sorry as soon as she realized what she had done. But Rosa's eyes had swelled up with the tears and she quickly turned away. A few moments later, she went out to bleach the clothes. She had to cross the street to get the few stones gathered about in a whitened circle where she has to lay the clothes. While crossing the street, a few dogs ran past her and she tripped in the middle of the street. But her grip was on the basin of the clothes afraid that it might get soiled. A few women came to her and scolded the dogs away. Shoo, 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 shoo away. go away. Nothing's the matter with me. While struggling to get up, she noticed that her wrap had been loosened and had bared her breasts. She looked around wildly, sudden shame calling her cheeks, and raised the wrap and tied it securely around herself again. Then she found out she could not walk because of a sprain. Oh, it hurt so badly. But I must get back immediately, else I will get another slap from my mistress. When there came down the street, a tardanella without any occupant except the cochero who rang his bell. But he couldn't move away from the middle of the street. Go around! There's a plenty of space around me. I couldn't move even if I want to. The man jumped down from his seat and bent down and looked at her foot. He started massaging her foot with his gentle hands. Rosa looked wildly around to see if anyone was looking, but no one was paying attention. The cochera carried her inside his tartanilla, plumped her down on one of the seats, and continued massaging her foot with coconut oil. Where do you live and what happened to you? Over there by that house. Oh! There were these dogs running around, and I have a certain fear over them, and I accidentally tripped and sprained my foot. The cochera finished with her foot. He took the basin away from her as soon as he saw her motioning to step down. He bleached the clothes himself, knowing like a woman which part to turn to the sun. Rosa, where are you? Upon hearing her mistress' voice, she quickly snatched the basin away and started limping her way back to the house. Hi. I wish I had asked what his name was. His ever so gentle hands and the way he carried me up to his calessa. He must be doing his own washing. That's why he knows where to bleach the clothes. Oh, how I wish I could sew up his tear in his trousers or measure his calessa seat cushions and make them and strain them on his vehicle. Oh, when will we meet again, my angel? Every time she went for drinking water, Sancho always insisted in pumping her can for her. But when the woman would tease her about him, she just mad at them, full of her hidden knowledge about that someone picking her up and being gentle with her. She was too full of this secret joy to mind in their teasing, where before she had been openly angry and secretly pleased. Now, she was indifferent because she has an angel waiting for her. One night, she sent the maid to a store for wine. Rosa came back with a broken bottle, empty of all its contents. Sudden anger at the waste and the lost made her strike out with closed fists, not caring where her blows landed until the girl was in tears. It never occurred to Rosa that she could help herself strike out and return every blow. Her mistress was thirsty-ish, with a peaked face and thin frame, and Rosa's strong arms, used to pounding clothes and carrying water, could easily have done her hurt. Aroy! Aroy! You filthy, clumsy fool! What a waste of good wine! Hey, now where am I supposed to get the money to buy another bottle? Rosa folded her clothes and crept slowly out of the house in an attempt to run away, vowing never to return to that house. I'm never going back to that house again. It's useless telling her what happened because she wouldn't listen anyway. It's all Sancho's fault. If I had 
hadn't met him on the way to the store, none of this would happen. Come on, let me walk with you. My mistress will get angry if she saw us together. Oh, come on. It's just a trip to the store. After they bought the wine, Rosa struck a sharp stone and bent to hold a foot up, looking at the sole to see if the stone had made it bleed. Her dress had a wide, deep neck and must have hung away from her body when she bent. She looked up and found Sancho looking into the neck of her dress as she quickly looked away. After a while, he had stopped to pick up a twig lying on the ground and drew thin, sharp peaks on the ground. They look nearly like zigzags. One does drill playfully with any stick. But Rosa, having seen him looking into her dress while she bent over, now became so angry that she swung out with all her force, struck him on the cheek with her open palm. You're such a rude pervert. You filthy green minded. Ha! You're the filthy one, simple minded girl. Rosa attempted to slap him again, but he was too quick and slapped her instead. The surprise of it angered her into sudden tears. She swung up the bottle of wine she had held tightly in one hand and ran after the man to strike him with it. Sancho slapped her arm so hard that she dropped the bottle. The man had run away laughing, calling back a final undeserved name at her, leaving her to look with her tears at the wine sweeping into the ground. She quickly picked up the big piece of glass and hurried back to her mistress, wondering whether she would be believed and forgiven. Where am I going to sleep now? Oh, I'm so going to kill Sancho. I wish a cold wind would strike him dead. If I meet him now, I would throw this stone at him and aim so well that I would surely hit him. Hi, this is the longest day I ever had with this mistress. Either it's the master's smirking way and the evil eyes, or it was the children's bullying demands that would drive me crazy. But despite my mistress' spells of bad humor, she treated me well with some of money for a dress or for a scene with other maids. Actually, without me, she would have died when she was drunk if I had not forcibly fed her. But the way she treated me a while ago, it really hurts. Hmm, I'm not going back. Or where could my angel be? Suddenly, she felt the swish of a horse almost brushing against her. those beautiful busts. I hit the wrong love. <laughs> she looked up angrily and threw the stone at him, which landed on the side beside him. He called the horse to a stop, clambered down, and ran back to her. Why did you throw that stone at me? Oh, it's you, my angel. Is your body so precious that you have to kill my horse? What is wrong with you, woman? And why do you keep calling me angel? That is not my name. I'll take you to the municipio if you do not apologize at once. But she ignored all his protests and continued glazing at him. After a while, she realized that he did not even remember him and turned away. Angel! Oh, you don't even remember me? Oh yes, the girl with the swollen foot. Rosa forgot all the emptiness, forgot the sudden sinking of her heart when she had realized that even he would flick his whip at the girl alone on the road and lifted her smiling face at him. Oh, my foot healed very quickly, thanks to you. Oh, that's nice. Where are you heading? I'm going home. Come and ride in my horse. Don't worry, it's free of charge. So, how are you? With the grace of God, all right. Thank you. Thank you. With a beautiful face and body like that, there must be many men courting you. Oh no, not one. Soon they had arrived. Thank you, thank you so much for your kindness. Don't mention it. Oh wait, what is your name? Pedro. Rosa went into the house without hesitation, forgetting all her vows about never stepping into it again and wondering why it was so still. She turned on the lights and found her mistress sleeping at the table with her head cradled in her arms. A new wine bottle before her, empty now all of its contents. With an arm about the thin of woman's waist, she half dragged her into her bed. When the woman would wake, she would say nothing, remembering nothing. Rosa turned on the light in the kitchen 
and hummed her preparations for a meal.